Well, it's a joy once again to come and minister once again this Sunday. And I'm so excited about this day's message because it's a message that we have not heard uh, in a while and we have lost along the way. Uh, you know, when before I'm, I get into it because I'm so excited about it, I'm going to start off with a word of prayer and we're going to pray and get into the word of God. I'm so excited this morning of what God has in store for us. Um, the, the, the title of my message, if you're looking for a title, it is, uh, it's uh, the name Jesus. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we want to come and thank you this morning for this opportunity that we can once again come before your presence. Once again, hear your voice and hear your word. I pray that our lives will be changed, will be transformed because of the name of the Lord Jesus. That it will not be a name that we speak religiously, but it might be a name that we have a relationship with. It might be a name that's, that's so mean, so deeply, so deep, deep within our hearts, that lies so deep, deep within our hearts, a name to transform and change us. So we pray that that name will equip us. That name will challenge us. That name will bring us to the realization of what we ought to be doing as a church and what we ought to be doing as a ministry. Father, we be, give you all the praise. We we'll give you all the glory. For everyone who is hearing this message, hearing the sound of my voice, I pray that you touch their lives. Tell them to reverence the name Jesus and give it its rightful place. In Jesus' mighty name. So take all the glory and take all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about today's message. We're gonna, this is going to be a continuation of last week. Uh, we were looking at the book of Acts. I'm still in the book of Acts. I'm going to be in the book of Acts for a while because there's so much truth. There's so much nuggets and enrichment that I'm getting from this book that God has dropped in his word. And our, it's, 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 it's our honor to dig out, to dig it out, you know. Uh, so let's, let's dive into the word. Let's dive into the word. Beginning from Genesis, God starts with Adam. And Adam sins against God. When Adam sins against God, God starts again with Abraham. That's where God starts. We have the flood, Noah, but then we lead to Abraham, where God says, Abraham, I'm going to start with you. Abraham, I'm going to, he says, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to blah, blah. Then God has blesses him, and uh, eventually with a son, God's promises come true. But he says to Abraham, come, take a journey with me. I want to take you, I want to show you something. And he takes Abraham through a journey. Abraham becomes Abraham through a journey. And we know about Abraham, Isaac, uh, and then uh, Jacob. And then we have the 12 patriarchs. From the 12, we have the nation of Israel. We have the nation of Israel. But when the nation of Israel is born, it's born in captivity. It's born in captivity. It's born in Egypt. So we have the Egyptian rule that they are born under captivity, under the Egyptian rule. And after the Egyptian rule, they get to a place where they are delivered. God brings up Moses. He says, I've heard the cries of my people. I'm just paraphrasing. He says, I heard the cries of my people. But all this is for the promise of a savior. And he bring, they bring Moses. So Moses becomes a deliverer for the children of Israel. And he takes them through the wilderness and through a journey and a process where God is working on their hearts. God is working on them because they are desiring a king. They want a king. Eventually, we get to Saul. Because they are so desperate to get a king, God gives them Saul as a king. And Saul fails, they bring David. And he, when David comes onto the scene, God says, this is the man after my own heart. And through the walk with God, um, with David's walk, he says, I'm going to put someone who's going to sit on King David's throne. 
and you will, you will reign forever. And that person is Jesus. So after the Egyptian rule, we do have the Roman rule. We have the Roman rule. The Roman rule, so even when Jesus comes, they first go to Babylon, sorry. They first go to Babylon, then we have the Roman rule. But through all this process, they are trusting and believing God for a deliverer. They're trusting and believing God for, for someone, for a king, who will take them out of their misery, who will take them out of their captivity, who will deliver them from the Babylonian rule, who will deliver them from the Egyptian rule, who will deliver them from the Roman rule. And we come to the New Testament, and we have the story of Jesus. Today we're going to zero in on this name and on this person, Jesus. Now, last week we began in chapter 3, and we're going to move on to chapter 4, and still of the same story. So they're at the gate, beautiful. They've healed, Peter and John have, uh, have healed the crippled, and they've walked in with this crippled, and this crippled had not walked for 40 years. For more than 40 years, he had not walked. And he received his miracle, and he's walking, he's leaping, and praising God. And uh, Peter finds this an opportunity as people start to gather and began to realize this was the man who sat at the gate beautiful. Isn't it amazing that people will label you? We don't know this gate, this man's name. But if you say to the man, the lame man at the gate, beautiful, everyone knows who they are talking about. People who give you names will label you, but they recognize them as someone who had been lame. And now, because they had recognized him as someone who had been lame, when they saw him walk, they saw the hand of God. They saw the hand of God. And I'm here to tell you, that when people see you, they, may they see the hand of God. May they see a different person to the person who was. May they see a different person. Let's dive in to this story in chapter 4. And as, 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 as so Peter comes and he finds an opportunity and he begins to preach and share with the people uh, the message, the good news. And one of the themes that runs throughout scripture is that whenever the apostles start speaking or sharing the word, they zero in on the name of Jesus. They zero in on the name of Jesus. And, and so chapter, verse 1, verse 4 says, And they spake unto people, and the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. And as they spake uh, unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through, G through and they preached through Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. We can spend the whole year, I can preach the whole year on the word of God without mentioning the name Jesus. And you become so motivated. I'll tell you that you're the head, you're not the tail. I'll tell you that you're above, you're not beneath. I give you messages that will inspire you, messages that will make you say, wow, that was powerful, and get you motivated and worked up. And you're ready to go for your week. But as a ministry and as churches, we have lost the authentic word of God because we have not focused on what the apostles taught and preached. And what was that? They taught about Jesus and the power of his resurrection. And God added to their numbers. We wonder why our churches are not growing. It's because we have not zeroed in on the name Jesus. It's because we have not zeroed in on this name. It says that and these guys were grieved not because they just taught. No, they were not grieved because they just preached. They had no problem with them teaching. But it is because they preached of the name Jesus and the resurrection and his resurrection from the dead. How many messages do we have on our pulpits are mentioning the name Jesus? How many messages are touching on the redemptive name Jesus? So they had a problem with that. 
These days we can preach and we will not have a problem because we don't need to mention the name Jesus. We need to just get you hyped up for the week and you come for another injection the following Sunday. So they laid their hands on them. How be it as many as heard the message believed and the number of the men was about 5,000 that heard that message that Peter preached. Before, in, when, if, we, if we go back, you know, and uh, the 3,000 were added after the day of Pentecost, it was, the message was very clear that Jesus, the same Jesus that you crucified, is the same Jesus we speak of. Is the same Jesus who promised the Holy Spirit. Our messages have to be centered around Jesus. I know this message might not be the popular message to hear. It might not be a message that gets you all excited and wound up and, 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 and be very uh, energetic and scream and say yes. But there is that name that we cannot ignore. So verse 5 says, And it came to pass on the morning uh, that their rulers and their elders and the scribes and Aeneas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexandra and as many of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. It's amazing that this was the church. They are gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them uh, in the midst they asked, by what power or what name have you done this? The only thing we need to know from you is by what power and the name that you have done this. They are not disputing the miracle. <laughs> they are not disputing the miracle. The miracle is great, but they want to know by what power and what name have you done this? In our churches, ministers, in our churches, or as, as, as a congregation, as a member, as a part of the body of Christ, in what name and by what power do you believe? Have you done this miracle? If miracles were taking place, if miracles were taking place in our hearts, in our, in our, in our time, you know, uh, I began to call upon God and I'm, I'm still trusting God for miracles to be taking place. We cannot be part of the body of Christ and not have the full package. We cannot go on a semi-package and, 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 and expect the world to change. The Bible talks about the apostles continuing steadfastly in prayer. I'm going to read it. Verse, chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly, what? Continuously in the apostles' doctrine. What was that doctrine? The doctrine that Jesus came, he died, and he rose again, and he will return again. And he has left us the Holy Spirit. That was the doctrine. And in fellowship. In fellowship. And in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. That's a message on its own. And in prayer. We spoke about prayer last week. But we got to zero in on the name Jesus. We got to zero in. The doctrine was Jesus Christ of Nazareth has done this. So let's, let's read. Let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 7 says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power and what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Said unto them, ye rulers and people of elders of Israel, you church leaders, whichever church you go to, whichever, uh, whatever form you minister, you congregation members. That was, this is, this is why now you are speaking. I said he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he says, if this day you be examined of the good deed done to the important, important, Men, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all that in all the people of Israel 
that by the name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand here before you whole. Stand before you whole. I want to backtrack while I'm still there. I'm going to backtrack to chapter 3. When Peter addresses the crowd in verse 12, and Peter's verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 12, it says, And when Peter saw it, he answered and said unto ye men of Israel, Why marvel ye at this? And why ye look so earnestly on us, as though it was our own power or holiness we had made this man walk? We have stopped giving praise to God, even when miracles take place. And we have started giving praise to ourselves. You know, it's a dangerous thing as ministers to do this. It's a dangerous thing. He attributes the healing to God. He did not say to him, Do you know, my, do you know me? Have we ever met? He did not start giving a speech about the miracle or how powerful he was as Peter. He says, but be it known unto you, you people, that it is not through our own power. The power and the glory has to go back to him. Has to go back to him. So I'm going back to our, 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 our reading. It says, be it known unto you, all people of Israel, but by the name um, of Jesus, verse 10, sorry, be it known unto you all, to all the people of Israel, that it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth ye that ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by whom doth this man stand here before you whole. It is by the name, the stone which was set not for you, build, for you builders, which have become the head of the corner. Neither is salvation found in any man, any other, for there is no other name under, given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. You know, if I go to, uh, be it South America, if I go to uh, Israel right now, I'll find many names with the name Jesus. There are so many people with the name Jesus. And sometimes we can so get so casual with the name Jesus that we throw it around religiously. So when someone is in trouble, oh Jesus. When somebody, something happens that shocks you, it's become expression that believers and non-believers use. Jesus. You're scared, Jesus. But we just throw that name, not having an understanding of the power of the person behind the name. Oh, my, my, my desire this morning is that I make you fall in love with the name Jesus. For there is no other name given under heaven that we, shall be, that we, are, we are saved by. If you remove Jesus, because in Genesis to Malachi, this is the promise of the coming Messiah. It's talking about Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are focusing and zeroing on the name Jesus. From Acts to Revelation, it centers about, his, about the name Jesus and his return. That's the entirety of the book. If we remove Jesus from this Bible, it becomes worthless, meaningless. We can may as well throw it away once we remove Jesus from this. Jesus, the person, is what I'm calling you this morning to fall in love with. The name that's above every other name. The name that's worthy to be magnified and exalted. Our message as believers has got to be centered around Jesus. What are we preaching to people? Are we giving them motivational speeches? Are we just motivating them? We preach about self-improvement uh, and self, 
and self um, and self preservation. Oh God, make me wealthy. Oh God, make me uh, rich. Oh God, bless me. Bless me this, bless me that. Oh, that I might be prosperous. Give me a million dollars. I'm trusting you for this deal. I'm trusting you for that. It is all good, but we gotta go back to the message of Jesus. That we might preach Jesus, brethren. That we might preach Jesus, my sisters. That we might preach the name of Jesus. Jesus ought to be the most talked about person not just name, most talked about person in our lives. Our children know more of cartoons than they do the name Jesus. They'll tell you the latest cartoons. They'll tell you the latest toys. They'll tell you uh, the, the latest uh, superheroes. But have we taught our children Jesus? And as I come to a close, have we taught our children Jesus? I'm going to skip to verse 20. When they tell them, you see, but it spreads no further among the people. Of, uh, they're telling them not to preach about the name Jesus. They said, we don't have a problem with you preaching, but don't preach about this name. So verse 18, I'm going to read verse 18 and 20 and I close. It says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name Jesus. Not to teach in the name Jesus. Go teach, but not in the name Jesus. But Peter and John answered and them and said, be it right in the sight of God, or to hearken unto you more than God, judge ye, for we cannot help, but for we cannot but speak of the things that we have seen and heard. Would the Pharisees have a problem with the church of today? Or would they say we are good? May we preach Jesus. May we preach Jesus. So I'm just going to quickly pray. And if you do not know him, then your life is doomed. You have, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That means that without the life, there is no living. Without the way, there is no going. And without the, and the way, there is no going. And without the truth, there is no knowing. So you, not, not, you, you cannot live without him. Follow after me as we pray. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I have lost my way. I pray that the name Jesus might not be just another name. But I pray the name Jesus would be personal. I receive Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Remove from me false religion. Remove from me deceit, but may I zero in on the name Jesus. May that name be perfect in my life, be made perfect in my life. Thank you for the name Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and God loves you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. Have a blessed week. And we'll meet again next time. Bless you.